call to order the meeting of the Rutland Town Select Board for Tuesday, April 9th. It is 6 p.m. We have a full select board with us tonight. Sharon Russell, Matt Getty, Mary Ashcroft, Joe DiNardo, and Kurt Russell. Please rise and join me for the pledge. Kurt Russell. Thank you and welcome all. Matt and I just had a two hour personnel policy meeting, which kind of explains how I'm off a little bit. All right. I'm surprised you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's let's take things out of order just a tad, and I understand there might be a presentation in the off thing. Deputy Chief Washburn. If you would, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's happening. Okay. Okay. Nobody does. <laughs> You're in the right place. Oh, so good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I am Ed tonight. Ed cannot be here, but a uh, pretty special thing we have going on tonight. So I just barely roped Matt and Mary in about a half hour ago. He is now just finding out. So friends, family, thank you everybody for being here. So what's happening tonight, this is the Rotten Town Police Department Award Announcement. Presented by me will be given to Senior Officer Placus, and the date of the incident was November 2nd, 2023. So on November 22nd or November 2nd, 2023, at approximately 8:45 p.m., Vermont State Police Dispatch received a 911 call about a suspicious individual standing on the Cordline Road overpass within the town of Rutland, Vermont. The 911 caller stated the individual was standing near the guardrail and looking over it. Senior Officer Plankus arrived on scene and found the individual was a female who was now standing on the guardrail, threatening to jump. Senior Officer Plackus immediately called for assistance and began engaging the female in conversation in hopes to de-escalate the situation. As more officers arrived on scene, the female began climbing over the guardrail and Senior Officer Plackus continued to talk to her and was able to get her to come back on the other side of the guardrail. Senior Officer Plackus continued to talk with the female for approximately 15 to 20 minutes, which allowed time for other officers to get on scene, one of which she was familiar with, and ultimately led to her going with Officer Placus to seek help. So with that, <sighs> to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the Rutland Town Police Department has awarded the life-saving award, Senior Officer Jimmy Placus for performing extraordinary actions to save the life of a person who would have likely died if not for his actions. Congratulations. Thank you. We're very proud of you and we appreciate your work. <laughs> your time. <laughs> so, thank you. You are all set. Thank you. Thank you. One of you. <laughs> You're welcome to stay, but of course. <laughs> thank you. Yep. yep. Yeah, very nice. Thanks, Ted. We try. Okay. So, back to our agenda. Don't go too far. You got a report later. Yeah. All right, approval of select board minutes for our meeting of March 26th. They are in your packet. Is there a motion? So moved. 
Motion's made to accept. Second. And seconded. Additions, corrections, or deletions? If not, all in favor of the minutes, please say aye. 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 I abstain. Uh, I'll vote aye. There's one abstention because Joe That's wasn't. Right. There might be two abstentions. Thank you. Two abstentions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wasn't here. Oh, no, that's okay. I was just wondering, would somebody else second the, right. the acceptance then? Yeah, I'll second. Okay, good. Sure. All right. I will circulate. Procedure. Okay. Are there any member uh, board member announcements? No? I've got one minor one. Okay. April 26, Roland Town, Jazz Bistro at the school. Your uh, favorite or least favorite Slack man will be playing the alumni band. So <laughs> if anybody wants to get a table, you can get reservations. Online? Uh, I think you, you need tickets? to go through Sherry Bathalon. I'm sure I can okay. sure I can hook you up if you're interested. It's a fundraiser for the uh, Friends of Music. It's a good time. And what do you play? I, <clears throat> for a limited time only, I will be playing the trumpet. <laughs> and you've been practicing? <laughs> I have to practice or else I cannot play. Like, Aaron gave me the first trumpet part, so I really have to practice. Whoa. Oh, boy. <laughs> Say we know Kurt Russell. Can we get in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, there's no relation. <laughs> um, just a reminder that it is not a violation of the open meeting law to go to a social event. So we are all we can all go there. Just don't discuss business while you're there. That's right. <laughs> Wonderful. You'll remind us again, I'm sure. Like on the 23rd. But tickets <laughs> may be going fast. So how many songs do you want to play, Matt? What's that? How many songs are they going to have you play? Five or six. Ooh. Nice. I might Any have other <laughs> board member <laughs> announcements? Mr. Russell? No. <laughs> okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> I'll have to tell Steve he has another song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what? He wouldn't mind. He thinks you're the best. <laughs> All right. Update from the select board chair. Just... Um, we, I will ask for an executive session toward right around 7.30 or possibly earlier, depending, and it is to consult with town council on some things. We're also um, possibly expecting a, um, a phone call or a text from Tina Kesheva um, for the Rutland Town School, which is meeting tonight as well. So if that comes through, just interrupt what we're doing, if you would, please. Okay. Are there any questions from the floor, public comments, or anyone who wishes to talk to the board um, on a matter which is not otherwise on our agenda? Chris Howland. I wanted to defer until the uh, discussion on the April 30th election, if I may. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Thanks, Chris. All right, um, so we'll go into our agenda. Mike Delahanty for Town First Constable. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, nothing too crazy, um, just a little update from the mall, from the Diamond Run Mall. Um, uh, actually, just found out tonight that Bill had sent some photos along to the ownership of the property uh but i also did and there's been the one of the doors on the on the east side of the building the old sears location someone definitely did some damage to it and to make entry um so i had forwarded some photos along to, uh to advise them and then there was also a storm drain on the uh, north side of the parking lot um that pretty sizable sinkhole started around it um i provided them with those photos as well um, they got right back to me. Uh, I CC Bill on them. Uh, they got right back to me, said that they were going to do what they needed to do to secure the building. And then 
for now, because I told him about the, the sinkhole I said at night, someone was to drive in that parking lot, they will cause serious damage to a vehicle if they were to fall into it, drive into it. Um, so they were, they were going to contact Belden uh, to see what they could do with it. But for now, they were going to cone it off until a representative from Belden could see it. So still keep an eye on the place. Um, but obviously, yeah, they, someone had definitely did their best work to get in uh, recently. So. <laughs> But like I said, they they were very responsive to it, uh, and they they're going to handle it. So as soon as they do make the repairs or they are able to board up that side, they are going to send some photos along. So I'll keep you posted. Is the place not alarmed? No. So <laughs> apparently, uh, I believe sensor has, I mean, probably multiple cameras on the inside. Uh, usually, when someone makes entry, they call. Um, I don't. Chief Dumas isn't here to. Well, we don't. We want them using their own security first. They right. know that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I haven't heard anything. We haven't been up there, um, but um, just like I said, I went up and checked the place out, and there was just a few concerns I wanted to make them aware of. Okay. So that was that. Thank you. Do we have them coming in to talk with us? Uh, Joe Anthony said he would be here on the twenty third. On, okay. On, online, likely, but yes, he plans to attend the twenty third. Okay, good. Cool. Cool. So we'll see where we are on the 23rd. Perfect. Good. Thank you much. Yeah, and that's it. That's all I got for you. All right. Any questions of our first constable? All right. well, thank thanks you guys very, very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks. All right. Ted Washburn, Town Deputy Police Chief. Hi. <coughs> um, so you should have both the bi weekly stat report and also the monthly stat report for March. So, I don't know if you want to start with the monthly report or your choice. We'll start with the monthly. I just I saw it in Joe's hand, so I figured it was right there, anyways. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, for the month of March, I'm not how sure how Ed does it, but the total South End calls for service made up 85% of our overall monthly call volume uh, with 114 cases. And we had 134 calls for the entire month of March. Um, so putting our yearly average right now at 73%. Um, according to Lynn and the stats, we're running about two weeks ahead of where we were in 2023 right now. And based upon just the last two days that I've been working, the South End has been where I've spent my days. And it's just nice weather. And that's just what happens when nice weather comes. Party. Through. So, uh, so that is where we are with the monthly stats for March. Yep. Okay. Question about that? Yeah. yeah. I, I always kind of struggle comparing these things, but I mean, so this report is saying 85%. Yep. This one over here looks more like half the way this is categorized, but maybe this is. So this is the biweekly, the two weeks. So I do two week reports just for the board meetings. And then Lynn takes all the calls for the entire month. So in the last two weeks, uh, we had, I say roughly 55 calls because give or take with Valcor on a call here, missing there, or they added one randomly. But of the calls we had, Matt is right. We've had, you know, over half or about half were stemming from the South end for just the last two week period. Yeah, okay, and so the way these are getting logged, the blue Rutland Town is everywhere else other than Correct. what we deem to be South End, which is what defined by which is south everything of south the, of anything south of the city line, south of Cold River Road. That is the South End. Okay. Other questions on this on the data. I think it just emphasizes what we've said right along and why we've negotiated what we did with those folks. <laughs> Obviously, it's not getting better. Um, and on the, this chart. Yeah. Um, looks like... It, these numbers in the brackets, the number of offenses in those categories. Correct. So, are we 
this is saying top 10 offenses, but retail theft, we've only got one. Correct. So if we, we had in the last two week period, those are what we've had for arrests that have been logged into Valcor. So at the time of running the report, there's a lot of calls that aren't resulting in arrests. At the moment for this two week period, yes, or the calls weren't, the calls are in as a theft, but we haven't gone into the call to show the charge of retail theft having been committed. So, which is the unfortunate part that that information won't get captured. So if we run the report like I did on Monday morning, it shows we had drug possession, leaving the scene of a retail theft, but maybe we had four other thefts that week that just haven't been classified yeah. as a retail theft yet. So that this report is always done on a biweekly. Would it make more sense to just shift that to monthly so that we are more likely to actually capture that? I can. It's usually we've just done as biweekly just for the board meetings. Yeah, no, but if we can we flip through them pretty quick. Don't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time because that's not here. <laughs> that's fine with me. You want to switch it to a monthly? I'm I won't argue with you. <laughs> you can tell them uh, you you earned all your pay. <laughs> seems like i mean as far as gathering any meaning out of the data that you know if the sample size is too small then it's yeah, not gonna it's not it. worth it or if okay if you go bi-weekly and, and that stuff hasn't been logged and the next bi-weekly then doesn't include it then it just gets lost so okay does this information still go up to uh kevin brown our town attorney i don't honestly know okay why don't you because this I is will good find stuff out. he should and um yeah i know i submit the them issue may rise again okay probably will probably will. <laughs> yeah, it probably will um while you're there there was a meeting of the police committee mm -hmm. um, on april 5th uh, matt was there i was there and chief dumas was there i don't think there's any action items there, but we we did want. Um, well, wait a minute. There is one. Um, the question, Matt, the CFAC thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this came up. So Ed brought Ed Broch's topic uh, to last board meeting, I think, or maybe it was a couple board meetings ago. Um, in that CFAC had approached him again about um, basically bringing uh, another officer in under our supervision that would be working dedicated for CFAC. Um, we discussed this and basically the feeling that Mary and I had is that we'd like to do it if we can keep it under uh, the budget of the grant that CFAC would be <coughs> providing us because our the current staff that we have is full doing other things. You know, we just had, um, we just voted on a budget to hire another officer to still to cover non CFAC duties. So we felt like we didn't, we couldn't dedicate somebody we have to that. But if there were um, somebody out there, preferably in addition to the position that we also want to fill, <laughs> that could do this for the budget um, that CFAC would provide that we would want to do that. So our, we had two requests of that. One, that um, we see the proposed contract with CFAC, so we understand all the parameters of that, what our supervisory responsibilities uh, and limitations are, and uh, that had rough out a budget for us um, for how those funds would be spent to uh, cover that position. And, you know, so then provided we get those things, we'd bring it back to the board for a vote on whether or not we want to pursue entering into another agreement with CPAC. So if we hire an officer to fill this position, they will be technically our Outland Town police officer, but they'll be working, their primary job is 40 hours a week for CFAC, which they pay for. Are they then ours to work? If they want to work overtime, like with the South End Patrol, I mean, they could still work yep. whatever under out of our monies. They would be able, so we could pay them for other works. We could, they wouldn't. I mean, I mean, we haven't obviously budgeted for that part of it, but such well, as the we South, have, money, we South have End money, budgets, yeah. we, have, we have, we have, we have that money from yep. the Cortina Fund, which would so obviously this would be a 
that would be their additional duties. They yep. would be working. I guess the regular job is working for CFAC, which is a good idea. And, I, and I'm okay with that. But then we would have them available to the town basically for emergencies or overtime yep. work or whatever they were willing, you know, and I don't know how many hours additionally an officer can work, you know, is it depend on their own? I mean, are the rules you guys have to follow about within that? It's a volunteer for us. It's a voluntary. Okay. Um, we've all kind of recognized that we, or we quickly recognize we have our limits. Right. Um, I can tell you that officer Plack is usually works two nights. Like he's set aside, like, okay, I'll work two nights for the week because I don't want to burn out. And right. I'm usually about the same. I usually work a day on my days off for a few hours just to show some coverage down there during the day so that Jimmy and Ed can get stuff done that they need to get to. Um, so we kind of just got to gauge it as to how we feel. Yeah. What your personal and home life so withstand. Correct. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, so, you know, <laughs> you, you find the right person we'll say I'm thinking somebody young, maybe unattached that wants to work 40 hours of work for CFAC and then says, you know, I don't mind working another 20, 30 hours a week doing stuff, you know, special patrols or whatever. So that would be to our advantage. And, and we have the funds out of that money. We have the funds and there's pay. some advantages that Ed was talking about, like really good training. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, it, and that wouldn't be paid by us. It would be paid by the CFAC. CFAC. I think the hardest part right now is finding yeah, exactly. individuals to fill these Exactly. Choose, fill these positions because so ed he, he brought me in a little bit on this um kind of leaning towards what i'm understanding is that there may be a retiree that could be potentially interested so it'd also be a benefit that their medical benefits in retirement are taken care of yeah so yeah so it would be less i, mean, I think it's worth pursuing yeah so we'll we'll, like, we'll yeah. get the contract and then we'll share it with you. And um, there's no action needed tonight, but we wanted to let you know. Is there, is there a timeline on that grant? Like they're five years or 10 years or it's just. So I know that Wendy, the director of CFAC has always said that she, if she's going to bring somebody in, she wants them to stay for at least three years because that's kind of the return. Yeah. They dump all the training into them. The three years is kind of like that. Okay. We've gotten our money's worth. Mm -hmm. So it's roughly three years. Yeah. yeah. And that's an asset. Once they get some of this training, that's an asset the town has to help our regular, you know, you run into a particular situation where you need those skills. Now you've got somebody on staff that's got some training. And some, so I don't see too many downsides to this. Um, well, that's a you'll pretty remember difficult when, job. It is. You'll remember when we had the contract before Ed Dumas was the person that, yeah. the CFAC yeah. investigator. And um, he was also working for us but it primarily full-time with cfac right. so we were concerned about burnout mm -hmm. yeah. we'll talk about it a few times with them but it's just hard it's to find program cfac stands for child first advocacy council center i think center, center? i think okay. we should pursue it all right good all right um did you want to do the last couple of things replace minutes yeah Oh, we discussed hiring a new police officer. Yep. We <laughs> didn't hire one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yet. Uh, Can I? Oops, yeah, go not, yeah, go ahead on that topic. Yeah. I was just thinking that maybe um, Ed's son should come in for an interview because he has... We, that's we, not us though we have yeah the it's not us. in the past it has been um the police department and with the police committee it, okay. that's that's kind of what it has been um and w remembering that matt and i are working on the personnel policy which would include changes to some of the Oh, conflicts of interest in hiring, and we wanted to try and get those resolved before we tackle that. We've we've made the candidate aware of what we're doing, so um, yeah, it, it's not. It, it's <laughs> my only thing to the police committee is yep. this: that this is a small term. Yes. Unfortunately, 
um, you know, when you've got somebody who already has, they, mm -hmm. you have to look at that. If somebody else comes along and we need to interview, then fine, that's right. not a problem. Well, keep in mind when we come back into the, with, with the personnel policy changes, mm -hmm. that will that will be one of the areas that we're going to highlight that needs discussion and the select board's concurrence. So um, we're working on it. Okay, Thanks. so we uh, also discussed um, situation at the animals at the mm -hmm. yeah. Cortina. Yep. Um, they had brought this up, or no, it was uh, Mike, I think a while ago, I brought this up. There's a lot of animals um, Ed's looked into um, some options for some vets that could come in and do clinics to make sure that you know, shots are getting done, all those requisites. Uh, there's a lot of dogs that are not registered as well. So he's trying to address that. We may reach out to the hotel owners about helping to facilitate that. Uh, but that's a situation that's becoming of concern, particularly for the Humane Society, because if everyone leaves at once and doesn't take their animals with them, we're going to have a yeah, we're going to have a very serious problem with um, rehousing. Yep. So. I can recommend a vet who also was part of the Humane Society is Janet Carini, mm -hmm. and I mean she does a lot of a lot of work with different places to help out. So along those same lines, we discussed with Ed, um, with touching base with the Cortina about the various requirements that we had in the agreement with them. Um, you know, it, well, and with John Paul as well as health officer to make sure that that situation is not becoming a health uh, problem. You know, we've got a list of requirements in the last agreement with the Cortina. They're apparently going to be continuing in the uh, program through June, at least. So it would make sense to um, ensure that those are being complied with. Um, so we may invite them back in for another meeting to touch base with them at some point. Um, well, actually, I guess we... We're going to recommend to the board that we do that and make that invitation. So I don't know if we need to vote on that, but. Um, who knows we need to vote. Would you folks like to hear from the Cortina management again about where we are in the contract and what their plans are up, not only up through June, but after June. Can't hurt. Okay. Um, um, I'll be okay. here if they, you know, I, I have never been overly thrilled with what they've told us in the past. So, oh, I understood. You know, I'm, I'm surprised we got the contract out of them when they signed it. So, um, it doesn't mean anything to them. It's the next you know, um, I, I don't see them abandoning this project anytime soon. That's, it's, you know, I, I'm not sure with the changes the state's made if it's as lucrative a business deal as it was, but. I still think they're better off than running a hospitality place as far as income in the number of rooms rented consistently and the income they're taking in consistently with um, little or no um, risk to them at all as far as getting paid. So, but we can listen. I mean, I don't know what they're going to tell us. Well, I'd, I'd kind of like to know what the plans are. Yeah. Okay. But so what well, I think, Bill, oh. Bill has perhaps been in touch with the Cortina folks to. Pass, yeah. Okay, so if you could see when they might be willing to come in for a visit, I'd appreciate it. Um, I will say that I've also, from a couple of different directions, picked up rumors, and that's all they are um, at this point, that the state of Vermont may be either leasing the Cortina or purchasing the Cortina for homeless housing hmm. and I've heard the same thing okay so um i've also heard that there were state agency officials down here looking at housing options in the area visited places in the cortina and places in rutland city and 
all of this leads up to town was not in on any of these tours or any discussions with state officials. One of so them. Well, you my, know, let, yeah, yeah. let me make one last suggestion, and that is that we also invite in um, the a, head of the Agency of Human Services or a designee to find out just exactly what the state is planning in our town. It would be good to know firsthand. Yeah, because as soon as the state owns that, that comes off the tax rolls. Yeah, that's gone. That's a and good then point. you're going to have every homeless person from here to hell and back. Well, let's, they're going to put in let's here. find out what's going on. Yeah. So I assume there's no problem with inviting uh, the no, that's a, I mean, that's a major hit to the town's tax base well, if that comes off the tax rolls. As soon as that state-owned property get pilot payments for that, wouldn't we? Well, that wouldn't amount we have to... A, a, Executive session coming up a little bit later with our town attorney, and that might be something we'd like to talk with our town attorney about. The state owns that. The response of our PD will not decrease. The situation will not change, and we will no longer be getting paid like we are once they own it. And we will we will lose the income monthly that Cortina's paying. We'll lose the tax money they are paying. Um, and we will gain absolutely nothing except possibly more people. And a and I don't know that it'll be. I doubt if it'll be any better run because they, they're they're unable to manage it now from the state level just to put any safeguards in place for the homeless that are there. They they've just like we'll throw money at the problem, and we just don't have. It's not in Montpelier. It's in Rutland, so it's out of our sight, out of mind, and we'll just keep throwing money at it. Um. I Which would is be, why it's yeah. rumors at this stage. So let's mm -hmm. get the state in here and tell us mm -hmm. what they really intend. So if, we Bill, really if you need, could yeah. um, set yeah. that up. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's even worse than when they told us they were going to do what they're doing. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? And we're, we, well, this is all police related, obviously. Any other questions of our deputy chief? Nope. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank Thanks you very you. much. Yep. Yep. And timely next on the agenda is John Paul Fagnant, Town Health Officer, Public Safety Building Clerk, and Second Constable. And so to kind of lead into that, JP, thanks for joining us. Um, would you be willing to um, take a visit down to the Cortina and <clears throat> see how they're doing complying with the other conditions in our contract with them. We know, for example, that because there is a, a condition in there that they will allow access for our town health officer. Um, so we'd like to know how they're doing. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to do that. As long as you recognize that the state has taken over this function from the local health officers for commercial properties, hotels, that type of thing. Yeah, we, we do understand that, but I, I think this is, you know, more advisory to the select board on whether they're complying with some of the things in our contract with them. We know they're making the payments. It's the other stuff we're wondering about. Um, and, oh, speaking of which, you had suggested that we look into adopting our own local health ordinance so that we could take back control over these things. Yes. And, and I would be happy to do that, to go down there and check that out and report further to you on that. Good. I okay, did, thanks. I did, co I did collect some other towns and municipalities that have adopted their own health ordinance, and I can provide those to the board in the next couple of weeks. We can start talking about that. That would be great. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, so what else have you got for us? That's quite a so bit. The, building, <laughs> the building's going along. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been by it, but they're starting to do some grading, especially on the west side where the parking is going to be. We pretty much, um, we're probably going to get an additional three parking spaces on the southeast portion of the property that uh, had not been planned for, but were certainly welcomed. Uh, Joe and I have been kind of, going back and forth about perhaps repositioning the generator and the gas tanks, uh, this won't involve 
really any change. They're just going to be repositioned, but for future access to that northern part of the property, it would be better if the generator were located, for example, sideways instead of perpendicular. So um, they're going to pursue that. The interior floors are due to be poured, I believe, this coming week. Um, building is generally weather tight, and they're starting to spec out and, and do the interior work. So things are going along. We did run into additional ledge, both yeah. inside to put the floor in, and we've been told there's probably ledge under the work trailer it'll have to be removed. So we're over our ledge allotment. I forget how many yards they had estimated, but it's uh, probably two to three times more than what they estimated. We'll be getting those costs so that you can take a look at it. Other than that, though, um, nothing further. Um, JP, I spent about an hour and a half with Gary and Sean this morning. Um, I had gotten an email from Sean about just what you were talking about, um, <clears throat> the recent um, site plan that uh, Patrick had drawn up. Have you seen seen the his kind of um, newest design that they wanted to do that would allow for the flattening out of that area behind the building and the relocation of the uh, propane tanks? Did, did you see that? I did, yes. Okay, so they asked me if if we could come up with, uh, I guess, a yes or no as to those couple of revisions. The the generator was set to be um, sited perpendicular to the building, and the generator is about twelve or fourteen feet long. It's a huge generator, and and I think on Ed's um, had talked to them about turning it sideways, and it'll fit between two windows, so it doesn't obscure any visibility and they want to know if that's okay to go ahead with it. <clears throat> and I said, I would talk with you. I, I think that that's fine because the generator pad needs to be poured um, by the 17th of this month. And then the generator will be delivered on the 26th. So Gary wanted okay with that. The propane tanks, um, they're looking to locate those over in that other um, little L shaped area off from the Mandor um, north of the police station or the police base. Um, so I think that's okay. Also, the only other thing that I don't know if it's a fly in the ointment, but the amount of material that was moved when they took out the unsuitable soils and stored on the property and is now going to be regraded to, to meet the slopes and fill in some of the area out back to give us a flat area um, will probably trigger uh, a, a permit for uh, uh, erosion control permit in I think that we need to authorize Edmonds and Patrick to go ahead and, and do that um, because the the threshold is an acre of undisturbed of disturbed soil and because of this extra material there they're pretty sure that we should get that rolling um, so I don't know if you need to talk to Patrick and um, go over that with him and get that going because they they have started grading the east side of the um, property to the two-on-one slope so they can get an idea but, and then the excess is going to be moved around to the north side of the building where that area and they'll make a flat area um i concur with you that we probably should hold off on that additional parking um on the north side by the generator and maybe look at that um on our own there but some of this will require moving some stuff around back there um so i i don't know if they they need you to i guess I don't think I had the authority to authorize the moving of the generator. That has to come from you and the board. And I think that's okay. I think that's a good plan in the fuel tank. So um, I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. I had, I, uh, I wrote, to, I wrote to Sean this afternoon, as a matter of fact, and told him to go ahead with those two changes. Okay. All right. So everybody's on the same page. And so um, just so the, you know, I got a chance to look at the revised, um, site work and what they're looking at is um in the front of the building there's a i think two or three parking places where there's no overhead doors and they can add another one or two there um and then off the east side where the um overhead doors face toward levens's field there's an area there that because of the slope of the bank they would be able to put two more parking so we may end up with like five parking places 
Um, did did they talk to you about eliminating the uh, enclosure for the, uh, you know, putting a dumpster out back in that enclosure? Because if we yep. do away with that, um, and I don't know if that's a big deal to have a dumpster there, but if we did away with that, that would add another one in that corner too. So you could actually end up with five additional spaces with relatively little there's going to be a little guardrail or something there there will be a small retaining wall that has to be built that's just to protect where the uh, flat area is off those overhead doors for the police cars and the fire pickup but um right so but those were they're the uh, pretty easy fixes to the parking and then we would have the opportunity down the road if the town wanted to look at adding some additional parking in the back there because originally the slopes from the building kind of started right at the building and sloped down but because of a lot of that extra material and they're not trucking it off site now they're just going to okay. flatten out the east and north side so but that additional material will trip that permit so um i guess you'll have to be on top of that part jp right right i'm, I'm aware patrick uh is going to go ahead and put that permit application together and as i said I told Sean about the generator in the uh, gas tank, so we're on the same page. Okay, that all looks good. Perfect. Good. All right. Okay. Anything else? Any questions for J.P. Fagnan under any hat that he's wearing? <laughs> okay. Thank right. you, J.P. Thank you very much. We've got it. A... Oh, okay. <laughs> and thank you, Joe, for your comments on that. Appreciate it. I have a message from Tina. Okay. Uh, the school board has agreed to send ballots if the select board was willing to fund them. Thank you. So move. <laughs> Second. Motion's been made. <laughs> uh, motion's been made and seconded for the select board to, um, out of the general budget, pay the cost of mailing ballots to each voter for the upcoming. Uh, revote on the school budget. I'm assuming I sort of fleshed out a little bit of some of the Okay. Sounds better than I would say it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Any discussion on the matter? Yeah, Matt. So at some point, not necessarily right now, I think we just, we do, we should review the process that of how this is supposed to work and we should perhaps come up with a policy for when we're going to do this going forward, because it's not something that we have budget for. Um, and, you know, it puts us in a, I think an awkward position if we're picking and choosing every election as to whether we're doing it or not doing it. It would be helpful if we had uh, some kind of policy so that if this situation applies, then we're doing it. I don't know. Or if, or, or we just do it for, every election and we budget for it and we know what that's going to yeah. be I'm that might be the easiest too. thing to do i'm not a big mail-in guy um you know mostly march elections i think people can show up and vote but if we have a re-vote for something i think it's important to get those ballots out to people in order to get a say back because people don't seem to show up okay one of the my concerns has always been as a voter and being here on the board for these last years is the lack of participation by the town voters to spend the kind of money we spend. You know, there's a $10 million budget for running the school, three or four million for running the municipal side of government. And what was it, Carrie? A third of the voters or thereabouts show up. Yeah. It, it's very disappointing. And so I think that we should afford these people you know, to almost to the, you know, I'm not going to go out and offer to go pick the ballots up, but uh, you know, we could mail them out to them, give people the chance to vote because I think more of the town should weigh in on spending 14, okay, 15 great. million dollars a year of taxpayer money. They, they need to, you know, take this seriously. And this I is think for some, they just don't get out. They, some of the older ones don't read the paper. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but it, this is, this is the best, you know, I think last year when we were talking about a sizable amount of money for that public safety building, we mailed out the ballots and we, we got a good return and, okay. and it allows people, it's, it's as convenient as you can get until they come up with probably some way sooner or later we'll be able to do online voting, you know, they'll figure out how to do that and make it secure. 
but this is about as close as you're going to get. Okay. Um, I think it's people need to need to express how they feel about this. Okay. Any further comments? The motion is to uh, mail out, well, approve the um, school boards. I think the statute says we have to approve what what they want to do, and the and the town will pay for the cost of mailing the ballots out of the general fund. Any further discussion? If nope, not, as long as people are allowed to vote, um, that's it. I was the more the I was very, very, very upset to hear that they didn't want to do that. And the right to vote in this country is very important. Well, you have the right to vote. Right it's right it yeah. just they don't get off. They don't go. But if you they, they don't know, then they can't. Yeah, so if you do everything to allow people to vote, and and like Kurt said, the major things like this, I think it's very important. And I think we owe the people of the town the opportunity. Some just some just can't get out. Others, you know. That. I, I just have to respond. I mean, I think it's fair to say it's a major vote and that's important. But to be clear, the school board was not denying anybody the right to vote. They decided not to send ballots because of the expense, which is significant. And the school board heard from people at multiple meetings, which again, were poorly attended. So anybody who voted no and didn't attend one of the informational meetings, you're not helping. So <clears throat> they heard extensively about, especially at pre-town or no town meeting about budget items that are similar to the expense of sending out these ballots. So it was not something that they were excited about doing, especially out of their budget. Since it appears that we can cover it out of our funds, I think that's great. And then people will have this convenience, but it's not that the school board was trying to deny anybody the right to vote. No. Okay, so Carrie. Carrie? So Matt, talk to me about the mailers that are going out on the school board's dime. Same, same mailing uh, uh, cost. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much. I don't know what the cost is. I, I don't know who's paying for it. If it comes out of our district or the supervisory union, printing out mailers for the school right. for everybody in town on their dime. So well, re remember that when we had a meeting here, and the like, several of us were in the audience, we did encourage them to get the word out more. I mean, that oh, yeah, was pretty important. We're kind of contradicting ourselves if we're talking about that. Well, well, this, the point, this they, is a they separate spend issue. money on multiple mailings. They did mailings before the first vote, too. So, right. I mean, every one of them costs more and more money. But. So, okay, the motion before you is to approve uh, the mailing of ballots to every voter in town and for the town to pay the cost instead of the school board out of our general fund. And, Carrie, I think we're, we're all set because we have the funds okay. Uh, because we didn't fill the vacancy in your office, right? Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's where the money's coming from this year. Matt's point is well taken. If we do this again, we need to consider the budget. I think yeah, uh, we can discuss this at budget time, but we should have, I think the town should have a fund of money for special elections, just an amount of money, put five grand or 10 grand in there. We've done it two years in a row. The money's there never spend it who cares but when this comes up it's there and then we don't argue about whether school or it's not me because this could be us it could be us it could be us last year having to have a special election for a play, uh, police uh, fire department building and we found the funds so those funds should be in a line item in the general budget just in case so okay. this is not a bad idea okay so anyway but. so if there are no further comments or questions all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 The, motion, the vote is unanimous. So we're going to pay the cost of mailing out the ballots and we approve the school board's plan to do so. Bill, would you let uh, Tina know? Okay. Thank you very much. All righty. Um, Barbara Noise Pulling. Hey, Barbara. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Audio and everything's working okay this time? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the, the, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. 
Um, the Planning Commission is looking at the housing survey that uh, the Regional Planning Commission sent out. Um, there were 77 responses, 65 from town residents. So there's some good information in there. Um, we started the conversation as, as the Planning Commission. There was some discussion about whether we were getting ahead of the market. So we're working through that. But um, a committee is going to look at the survey a little more closely and uh, come up with some recommendations for both the, the Planning Commission and the Select Board. It's uh, interesting, uh, maybe for your April 23rd meeting with the mall owners that or whenever that happens, um, that 40% um, of people think that the mall would be a good site for, for housing. Um, that's, that got, you know, a lot more votes or, you know, people saying, suggesting that for a site than any other site in town. Um, most sites in town got one to four responses. So there is, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of obvious that, you know, some housing should, should go in there as well. Um, but uh, it sounds like the residents are behind that as well. Um, for sites, they also kind of looked in general at uh, Business Route 4 and US 4 East as possible sites. So um, I'd like our committee to kind of look a little bit more into that, and what might be the possibilities. Harbor, was it business route? Oh, okay. Uh, west gotcha. and east of town. Yeah. West and east, gotcha. Floor. Okay. All right, interesting stuff. Um, do we have, is the raw data available somewhere? Yes, it is. Would you like it? Um, yes, please. Okay. I'll get you a copy of that. Should I send it to the, to the entire board? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, um, so small, a uh, small subdivision coming our way um, off uh, US Four East um, near the Menden Line, but uh, th that's about it for the Planning Commission. Okay. Questions for Barbara concerning Planning Commission work or anything else? The housing survey. All right. Thank you very much, and thank the Planning Commission. It's uh, another bit of data they're going to dig into, so we're grateful. Okay. Yeah. Be glad to. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Mike Rowe, Town Rec Director. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I don't have much. I just uh, put all the tennis and the pickleball nets up um, this afternoon. And I was working on the field the other day for baseball because they're starting to use that. Um, Chuck has already started over at Dewey cleaning it up and getting it ready. So hopefully after this little bit of rain that we come, our youth baseball will start um, as soon as the rain kind of gets out of there. It was supposed to rain, what, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and yeah. So he's getting that ready to go. So once the weather dries out a little bit, we will be off and running. So things are good. Right now we have a team for each of the levels for our baseball, so that's awesome. And once I have a schedule, I will post that to Bill, and you can go out and and uh, check out a little kid game down at Dewey. Um, but that's Pretty much it. It's going to come quickly and fast. I'm going to pull the cover off probably the end of vac my vacation next week. So we'll see how the weather is and we'll get a couple of the highway guys to help us fold it and pack it up. And then we'll move forward. Then it's really starting. Sure sign so, of spring. Sure sign of spring, without a doubt. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I really have, unless anybody has anything for me. Questions for Mike? Oh, we did look at the bill and I exhausted our um, options for the sprayer that I had talked about. So next meeting, I will have a proposal for one and then you guys can go from there with that. Um, but we did 
look at different options and we couldn't find anything that was nearly appropriate as to what we had talked about. Rutland Town Seniors. Yeah, I haven't heard much from them. Well, here's the question. They were without a leader. Um, and so at some point... I mean, I know I'm of age, but no. <laughs> I'm in that bracket. Um, at some point, perhaps, you could check in and see how they were. They may have to come under the rec umbrella more. I'm I'm a okay with that. That's up to them. And who is the new leader now? Well, who... There is no president right now. There's a vice president, and she's inactive because she gets tied up with select board stuff. Okay, so if that so... if you see that lady passing the street or you know on the creek road someday, and she you can let her know that she's more than welcome to contact me, and we okay. can we can have a meeting or discuss some options I'll, for the uh, have her do that for our esteemed group. <laughs> She drives a red car now. She's she not. does. That means she's getting a lot of tickets. Or a lot of tickets. From what I heard, the color not red. Not my town. <laughs> not my. <laughs> not um, told that and line. It's free game now. <laughs> as far as the gate, we're all set with the gate at Northwood. I'm not really going to go any further oh, yeah. with that. We're all set with that. Has that been? You finding that in the AM yet? What we had talked about without it really was closed uh, one day last week, and then we buried it in snow at the end of the week. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I figured. Really <laughs> so now to today, yeah. Okay, so anyway, we'll just start that practice that we had talked about um, since it is nice and light out at this point in the day. So we don't really need any extra people down there. Questions for Mike. Awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. Dave Sears, Town Road Commissioner. All right. Here we go. Um, start right off with a ball of fire. Somewhere in your packet, I believe, is the um, paving bid summary. I'll win the desk. We opened the bids. I don't have the exact numbers with me, but uh, they're all there. Uh, Fuller was the low bidder for the entire contract um, by roughly $15,000. What was Pike smoking? I don't really know. And wow. And Mike told me like the state canceled some big jobs. So he's like, we're probably going to come after this one pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Came so right after it. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't wow. you don't have it i don't know okay so let me just um so fuller sand and gravel the total bid package is one hundred eighty eight thousand forty six dollars and sixty four cents for pike industries total bid package four hundred fifty five thousand six hundred fifty two dollars and fifty cents and wilt paving total bid package two hundred three thousand thirteen dollars and 80 cents and that will is there a motion on we'll start with that one or do you want highway committee how do you want to do this and what's your recommendation well my recommendation is i would since two of these are fairly cool i mean i would defer to the road commissioner as to who he wants to work with but <laughs> Because that makes a big difference as to scheduling and what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have a problem with any of them. So, um, well, you know, the way I look I at it was uh, Fuller was, you know, roughly $15,000 on the short side. So um, we we put $250,000 into paving for 25. We put an extra 50000 in. Yeah. So that basically going to give us another sixty, roughly $65,000 to pave with in the spring. Or late fall, whatever, wherever we end up. So, um, you know, I don't, $15,000 is not nothing. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm okay with well, Fuller's did nice work. They did good work. You've mm -hmm. had good luck with them. I, yeah, I'm okay with that if you're okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have a motion? Then I'd move that we accept Fuller's bid. Okay. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to accept Fuller's sand and gravel bid for paving at 188046. Point six four discussion. So I'm yeah. still laughing over here, Pike. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> all, all in favor, please say aye. 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 They were going to buy a new milling machine That's, off us. <laughs> that so, is uh, 
That motion carries. Let me put it that way. Go ahead, Joe. So you do have some paving to do this spring under this budget, right? Under this budget, correct. That Wilk is going to do. Wilk is going to do our contract with them from last year. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then this. And, that, and basically, that's the money that we got back from the state for. Right. So Tom that's Monroe. that's under the current. Because the contract's good for whatever, and they're all on board with this and yep. ready to go as soon as the weather says yeah. yes. Okay, so this this paving will technically be available after July first. After July first, that'll be into the budget. We start July first. Just so wanted to clear that up. There is some paving going to be done by Wilkes this spring in, from oh, last right. year's contract, and then we're going to be getting some okay. from, from this year's and contract. What's the post road sidewalk extension? Why don't Highway Committee kind of report on that? What what should we do with that one? I, I would just, I if we're going to award the paving to Fuller's, I would just award the, yeah. that to Fuller too. Yeah. Okay. If they're doing, we're, we're giving them the easy, I don't know if it's easier, we're giving them the normal work, so we'll let them do that yeah. sidewalk because... Like you said last year, it's hard to find anybody with a sidewalk. And that's, that's actually why I included the sidewalk into this year's paving bid because it yeah. kind of forced them. You, if you're doing it, you're doing all of it. Right. Um, so yeah. I, don't have I, to I say we again. stick with one one contractor. And so, just, is that a motion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. And a second? Second. All right. Motion's been made and seconded to approve fuller sand and gravel to pave the post road sidewalk extension at a cost of 20,475. Is that the entire sidewalk? Yes. Not just a portion you got done, right? No, no, that's so from point A to point B. 1250 whatever, feet or whatever. Yeah. So it links with the other one. In front of the school? That's in front of the school up to Chesana. Up right, to that's the whole thing. Okay, okay. very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, any discussion about that? That's good. If not, all in favor? of Fuller for the post road sidewalk paving, please say aye. 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 Motion Perfect. carries. Okay, it's unanimous. And just as a side note, Kenna, uh, Fuller and Wilk were both $83 and change in place, yep. and Pike was 111 That's how they got there. Yeah. Ooh. I was like, whoa. Wow. Um, yeah. yep. I did That's not going to help them this year. <laughs> Speaking of paving this year yes. um let me just mention I don't, I don't see her calling in um but there alexis from 45 flory heights called me about having um the highway crew go up and do what is necessary to even the the um uneven surface between her driveway and the roadway i guess mm -hmm. that's the best way to yeah i talked to her for quite a while yesterday okay and, uh she made several phone calls when it was snowing. Yes, I know. I did point I, out. I, to I struggled her, with that a bit. Probably were out <laughs> so, plowing, but yeah. Yes. So I, I talked to her for quite a while yesterday, okay. and she's all smoothed out. Okay. And when, <laughs> when can she expect? Because she'll ask me probably when can she expect that that I, will be. I told her. To. I mean, we the 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 topsoil pile probably is not frozen right now, but it's not rakeable. No. It's a little wet. So I told her. I told her. Um, middle of may first of june depends on weather and a lot of things but okay she, right, was, good. she was okay okay thank you sharon yeah I, I i also had one of the select boards mr condon stop me and say uh what are you gonna do about the east pittsford road i said what do you mean and he said <laughs> he said well there's some pretty heavy duty ruts there and i said well you know we're just coming into spring but i will mention it to to dave and i don't know i mean i don't see it at the first part of the east pittsford road because mm -hmm. my daughter lives over there and the i didn't see anything yeah roads. the top section is getting rough that's that's on my radar for okay i'm just trying to spread it around i don't want to i mean we spent a lot of money on east pittsford road last year and <laughs> yeah. you know i Years of experience have taught me that if you put all of your money on one road all the time, then everybody's like, well, they get everything and I don't get anything. And I, I, I'm not, I, uh. I, I just said, <laughs> I, I get I, enough of that already. Yeah. I just said, I would mention it to you. Okay. I, you yeah. Know. Yeah. No, that's on the radar. So, and, and he did really know, and I'm sure he does, that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, you don't know until winter's over mm -hmm. how many potholes you're going to have. Yeah. So. 
So there's a second sheet here. That, that was just our, uh, our quantities that we use for the, our estimated quantities that we use for bidding. Okay. And if anybody wants TMI, I actually did it by street, by ton, by, so I got okay. the breakdown. So anybody that wants like something that's put them to sleep at night, <laughs> got you covered. So this is where these are neighborhoods that are going to see paving activity Correct. this summer. Yes. Okay. After July 1. After July 1. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Norm normally like fours will come in June or something. He said, yeah, he, he goes, can I, can I start a little bit early? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, he's like, I, I got summer paving. I need a little bit of spring stuff to get me yeah. launched. So. We've always allowed that. Yep. Okay. And they get paid July one. Yeah. Um, after the last couple of storms, we had a couple of truck breakdowns. We fixed some trucks. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff in house now that was probably done outside before, mm -hmm. which is, Pretty satisfying. Um, the storm last Thursday, Friday was just a fun one. Okay, I have a question on that. Yeah. So sometime in there, I was out cleaning my driveway, I guess, and uh, two different Hubbard trucks came by in close succession. Like the big one was still on the route when the smaller one went by. Is that So uh, they, they had a, a breakdown of one of their five ton trucks, their, their big plow trucks. So they shifted gears, went, almost made it back to the shop before it quit entirely and had to get it towed in the rest of the way. And they got their one ton truck. Um, so the second truck was kind of like in a chase vehicle kind of thing, like cleaning up for them and salting because he didn't have a salt. You didn't have a spreader on the, on the one ton truck. So you're chasing each other. Okay. How many call outs? 41. And what's our number? 40. Oof, okay. Yeah, so we, we paid them. If you see the stuff, we paid them their bonus money this one, one storm. Looking, it was looking good about yeah. February, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, I yeah, pretty much had them down. Yeah, I and didn't then say how anything, it goes. Did I? Yep. And then <laughs> after that's how it goes. After that's Valentine's goes. Day, we went south. I put my spreaders away in March, and that's what happened. That's uh, right. yeah. Yeah. I had everything yeah. washed and tucked away. April came back. Fifteenth, which yep. is next Monday. Yeah, well, I did it yesterday. So <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm telling you, I did it for 35 years. Long, so yeah. April fifteenth, and then I would say, okay. You're on your own after yeah. this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, just a couple more quick things. The signs for the plaza, I have them. Um, I know Ed's dealing with some stuff. So, and I talked to Teddy about it and he wasn't really entirely sure about placement. So I've got the signs are ready to dunk them in whenever uh, I get some place to put them. I will reach out to the direct plaza director. And yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it. So. Okay. Yep. Good. And then uh, one last thing, uh, Nancy McGuire called me today. Yes. Okay. She's got my bushes and, and, and shrubs and okay, trees. Okay, well, so <laughs> your bushes and shrubs could possibly start being delivered Thursday, Friday next week. Okay. And then she'll be in the shop for the following week, and on the 27th is her sale. Um, she said she hasn't quite sold out of everything yet. She's going to send me a list of what she has left. Um, it's probably in my inbox now, actually. But. Okay. This is the annual... Rutland County Conservation District, and I've mush, mashed the name badly, mm -hmm. but um, they do an annual tree and shrub sale. Very, yep. very good prices, very good stock. And we have at the town been kind enough to allow the town highway garage be used as kind of the staging distribution mm -hmm. area for the Saturday morning pickup. I was wondering how that was going to work because your trucks are outside. Do we have to move a fire truck? So <clears throat> she's creature habit, apparently. And she's insisting on using the middle bay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, it's occupied right now. It's a little bit occupied. So we're just going to move stuff around. We'll put whatever else we've got outside. It'll be good for a couple of days. And um, we'll put the fire trucks over on the other side. And if we need them, it's warm enough now. We can put them outside and work on our stuff inside if we need to or whatever. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll work around it. It's fine. Young young people going, the kids going up with their parents going to get an added that's right. Not just highway trucks. I got fire trucks to look at. Yeah. 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 That's good. Do the, um, yeah, the, the trucks, the highway trucks have names on them now. They do. Wow. So yeah. good. They've had names on them since like October, I believe. 
pre-townwide celebration. That's it. Right. Thank you very much for accommodating that. That's sure. one of my That's favorite causes. Yeah. Besides, I you know pick up my shrubs there. So. <laughs> Any other questions from did, Dave? Did the did I notice that there's a missing limb on a maple tree on Post Road? I don't know that for sure, but I did get called from GMP that wanted to get a specific location on it, and then a guy from. Uh, is it Davy? I don't know. Val whoever Valancourt used to be yeah. um, called me by mistake and tried to make an appointment with Mr. Hemingway to get in there and take care of that. So I, I believe it got taken care of. I haven't. I, I think when I drove by there to see me <clears throat> coming down post road, I was, uh, I was looking for it. Yeah. Because we've had some really big winds and stuff. Yeah. And I thought, now I see a little. Oh, okay. Moment. So yeah. I'm assuming it's gone. Yeah. Chris Gandon called me uh, That's good. two weeks ago and said, well, we're going to send somebody and take a look at it. And then, well, that was that good because that involved would in, could possibly involve that three face. So I it figured it was nice if, for if them. it came out of that tree, there was no place for it to go, but into that three, three face. face. Yeah. So that was good that they took out of it. And, yeah. and I think Charlie will be happy with that. Oh, my God. I hope so because he's called me several times. Yeah. 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 And Melody said, you know, there are other people in this town that have to be taken care of too. <laughs> the, the point is, is it, I don't think during the winter it rose to the level of importance that Charlie and Melody thought it was. Well, Melody was fine. Yeah, she, yeah, she yeah, but yelled right, at Charlie. I ran into Charlie at, one day and, and I couldn't get a word in it twice. And I said, I know. We'll, we'll I, take I, I got the it, same thing. It, 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 it wouldn't have come out anytime soon, but it, it would have yeah, eventually. eventually but, but, but it was hung up good. Right. But now that it, it appears to have been taken removed, care of. So problem that, solved. Problem solved. And Green Mountain Power took care of it, which yeah. is even Melody better. was fine. She just said, yeah, listen, know. they have other people in the town. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Good. Well, thank you very thank much. You guys thank you, guys. Thank you. Sorry about the oh, snowstorms, but it sounds like it was Kurt's fault. That's one. I have it. Yeah. 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 Whatever. I've been blamed for worse. Did you get my, um, my maple syrup yet? That I told you, and oh, you yeah. said, "Oh, I'll pick one up, and you could." And you, you yeah, you gotta remind me every once in a while. I'll call you. <laughs> Send them a text. See, that's where the young people look at their phones. That's oh my god, do. that's all they do is text. Yeah, well, sometimes it's nice. I've got two or three since I've been here. <laughs> when you're running excavators all day, it's nice to get a text because you, when you're waiting for a truck to come back or something, you can look at a text. Mm -hmm. or if you get a phone call, you're on the yeah. phone. Are you complaining trying to run about my phone and, call, sir? Yeah. What's that? He Are you mine. complaining about my no, I answer every time, don't I? Yes, you do. Yes, yes, yes. you do. <laughs> okay. And I'm making whoopie pies this week. So Our I idea is a wonderful <laughs> thing. But she doesn't have maple syrup to put in them, so just be guided by We can that. make that happen. <laughs> Marsha Chaffee, Town Head Lister. Good, Good evening. evening, everyone. Um, well, uh, we just finished up. Uh, four, four weeks, but two weeks of intensive um, training with PVNR and VT Pi. Uh, today was the last day, thank goodness. Um, and we are scheduling site visits. Uh, we've gotten um, quite a few response to letters that we have sent out. So we will be going out for site visits. But other than that, that's about all I have to say. Okay. Thank these this is a uh, personal property, business property? Uh no, no. Th uh, this is real estate. Uh, oh, okay. Actually we have um six new bills that we have to assess and a lot of outbuildings, garages, pools, uh multiple different, you know, uh, assets to homes. So Okay. Are you finding that people are filling out that the town has a form to report new buildings? Yes. Yes, we are um, very happy about the way that um, the building, um, provisional building permits are coming in. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. I'm glad it's working. Any questions for our listers? If not, thank you very much, Marcia. You're welcome. Good night. Good night.
Okay, Chris Clark, Town Fire Chief. Uh, just one thing, I have another application on your desk for some signatures. Yes, you do. This is for James P. Marsh. Um, he lives at Barrett Hill Center, Rutland, so he will be a town addition. And he is, actually, I know him from church, so I'm <laughs> delighted to see him um, applying. And you're rec you've done all of the necessary background, and he's good to go? Good to go. All right. Motion, please. Move to accept. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to accept Jim Marsh as a new member of the Rutland Town Fire Department. Um, discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. So thank you very much. And I think we each get to sign. Any questions for our fire chief? Pretty quiet here. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next up, uh, Carrie Clark, town clerk and treasurer. She across the hall. Is she across the hall? No. Okay. So. I guess there's no carry today. All right. She was here earlier and she did leave off our orders, bills, and warrants. So thank you, Carrie. Um, Bill Sweet, town. Oh, I get to say it now, town administrator. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Kevin did join a little while ago, so he's there when you're when you're ready for him. Okay, good. Uh, so a few things from the desk, a few things in the packet. Uh, one thing that came up in the last couple weeks, uh, UVM has taken, um, I, I'm not sure how it got to them, but they they collect and manage the data for town tree wardens. And, uh, as it so turns out, we can't have two tree wardens. Oh, we can have a tree warden and we can have a deputy tree warden. So... Uh, do, do we need, we need to make an, a, you need to amend your we, we just one needs to be the tree ward and one needs to be the deputy and that's do we need all that we, we, we appointed two we did we you did we did co-chairs oh okay i missed that i guess that was well it was oh, well, one, one, one of the, one of the candidates is is on, is on the bottom right screen there oh, um sure. yeah but uh so so i was talking to i was talking to him earlier today so yeah so there the, if you'd like to have appoint one the primary and one the deputy, I, I can fill out the form and send the thing and move on. How the hell did you feel? Was it forestry I, I, department? I, I don't. I don't know. It's I, of course they're gonna catch on. They wouldn't catch on to anything else. But well, well they, they, they're, so that, the, what they're doing now, they're actually collecting the data from the town. So they they have the forms you fill out, and it has you here. Who's your tree warden? And then yeah. oh, do you have a deputy? Yes. No, yeah. So it's no, we don't. Fit their spread can't they just about. figure out who's the uh, primary and the deputy. I, I mean, I, it was well, a board appointment, so I'm not sure if they're. So Fred Nicholson had been. Yes. And so, then last meeting or two meetings ago, I forget which, we appointed Chris Howe yep. and Byron Hathaway as yep. co tree wardens. So, what's your pleasure, Matt? I make a motion that we appoint Chris as the primary and Byron as the deputy. deputy. Okay. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. Um, so Chris Howe, primary, Byron, secondary, any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll no. abstain from voting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the vote is four in favor, none opposed, and one abstention, Joe. Perfect. Thank okay. you. I'll take care of that. Thank you. I. Uh, I did reach out to 211 VT about the sign that we're going to be putting up, and they were very appreciative for us being proactive with that. Uh, I am going to try and establish a page on our website to give to them. So when people, if people call and say, I'm, I'm here, you know, that we, they can give a local resource. I'm, I'm, I should be able to do that. And we can then collect organization information 
for different ones around that we want to put on there for people to reach out so we can direct people to there as well. So uh, 211 VT is on board with our idea, which is good because we have four big brand new signs ready to go. Uh, and, uh, but letting them know what's, what's coming and they, you know, they, so they, they, they had a couple, couple questions, but it's easily taken care of. So could we post something on our website, inviting organizations to let us know if they want to be in that. Yes, absolutely. We, we can, okay. we can do, I've had one request from an organization who yeah. wants to be in on it. So, so I, I we, we don't, we, I mean, this is obviously something brand new, so we don't have really have any, any guidelines right. or, so we may, we may not, yeah, come it, up with it's something. up to us like how we want to do it so but yes there's there's we can do we can do a lot of that so okay. no no problem good thank you uh on your desk is a letter from the state department of environmental conservation uh informing us uh that pfas were detected in private wells around our property at 272 mckinley avenue and they are asking if we would like to have the water sampled that address does happen to coincide with a rather substantial construction project right now. So <laughs> I don't know if we want to have them do it right now. Uh, but there is a letter, there is a consent to sign if we want them to do it. I Ooh. don't believe they can access the well. I don't think oh, they okay. can. Uh, the plumbing might be run, but it goes might, to nowhere. Might yeah. not be accessible. So th th there is no cost to us, but... Uh, can we... Um, they said in the next few weeks, so probably it's not going to be available. No, it won't be available to the buildings. So I can, I can, I can follow up there. I do have a phone number to call. So I, I, okay. I, I mean, it wouldn't hurt yet. to have it done once. Absolutely. Build, you know, I guess we got to tell them. <laughs> yes. Right. So the, I, the I did site call is under construction. I did call and leave them a message and say like, it's not there right now. So, um, but they didn't call back. So I can say hey we'd love to have you do it but we got to wait a little bit so um the do you, i don't know if you, if you want to sign the letter giving approval and then we could just schedule it when we can or if you want to wait to what's your pleasure folks we do have the form oh it's the the term of this access agreement shall be a period of one year for the signing so, so they could do it within, within a year oh yeah i think you know, if they're going to do it, it wouldn't hurt okay. is that a motion yes i'll make a motion that we accept their offer and Second. get the well at McKinley tested. And you want me to sign on behalf? If you'd like, yeah. Okay. Sure. Is, is okay. there a second? I oh, I'm sorry, so. you did. Thank Sharon. you. <laughs> Seconded by Sharon. Yep. Any discussion? Okay. If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Aye. There were a lot of comments and questions about potential roundabouts in town. There are there are no plans for for roundabouts at the moment, but that was, I think that was probably one of my prouder ones. That went over really really well. Okay. Uh, it got seen by ultimately. So, are you going to fess up, about, please? Uh, I oh absolutely. I, I'll take responsibility for that. Absolutely. Uh, it was ultimately seen by about twenty two thousand people, uh, which was pretty pretty awesome. So. Uh, it was the, it was but the uh, the treetop yoga actually was surprisingly a, a big hit like that was actually people were like we're in favor of it so maybe Mike can maybe Mike can pull it off but uh, <laughs> buy Mike a harness <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was it was a lot of fun coming up with some of the ideas for, uh, for they were April Fool's jokes about turning all three and four way intersections in town into roundabouts um they actually worked pretty good <laughs> well that's what that was funny. i'm just so not sure where one would if be you applicable. if you go into the comments there actually was a lot of people on both sides of the on both sides of it it started quite a conversation so uh it, it was it was a lot of fun and um yeah so that was it was a lot of fun but uh it did cause some some concern but ultimately the people realized what day it was uh there was some also there were some very other good goods around the, around the state that were uh Good jokes. Well, we thank everyone for their input and assure them that <laughs> if we move in any particular direction like that, we'll let them know. Yeah, um, roundabouts are actually work. I, they I work like roundabouts very well. They can work very well. Yeah, uh, I I do uh, another topic. I do from time to time get requests for your your own contact information, phone numbers, things like that, and I I I direct people to email you. So we will ask push and ask for a phone number, but I still give them your email address because we've never nobody's ever really said like hey that's yeah, okay yes or no so 
that's maybe something for a, an offline discussion, but it, it does come up quite a bit when people call. Like, oh, they, they don't oh really yeah, number, I, I, I've so I, 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 I always direct them to your to your email addresses as the most effective yeah. way to get a hold of you to kind of protect the, and it's up to you to get back to them or not. So yeah. if you want to, that's that's what I've been doing. Uh, and so if people call you, they didn't get they didn't get it from me. Uh, but if you want to change that, let me know. But I think that's it seems to work pretty well. I mean, people. If I get an email and they want to chat, I just send them my phone number. Right, so exactly. Have a good that's, time. Call me now. I'm here. That's yeah. that's kind of what's what it's been. So, yeah. um, I just want to make sure that everybody was. This is long as they point. know that some of us are not email enthusiasts. So if we don't respond, it's not because we're ignoring them. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you Would you prefer to have? No, you? I don't mind. I either way it doesn't matter. They know who I am. Your, your phone number. And my phone number is, is public. already public knowledge. Yes. So I don't have any place to hide yeah she gave me mm -hmm. speaking of calls mary that one from the mrs johnson about um john ruggiero's wall that seems to be oh, yeah. caving falling she says it's tipping this way i did go up by i mean it looks she, like the whole place is going to fall down you, you know what makes me laugh oh this, to, this, this, we made a to-do about that building and fixing that corner and that's on the Gleason Road side. But if you look on the Route 4 side, the bottom panel of the overhead door is missing. Yeah. And and so the, the building is not secure. Now, I understand that Mike did say that if you went in through that corner, that there's no basement in that corner, and you're going to go into whatever was the cellar in there. But you can access the building from the front because the bottom panel of one of the overhead doors is gone. So the building isn't really secure. Um, it doesn't really say it. Um, you know, we, we may need to send John, have JP send him a letter and tell him, you know, you need to fix that overhead door too. Do something with the yeah, We can put Mike on it. Mike's been, That's right. Mike's Mike's been pretty been good with that it. too. Yeah. Mike's been yeah. Well, well, I'm surprised Mike would didn't you, notice it. Would you ask Mike to yes. check it out and take whatever well, action out, is it was necessary? Out before Absolutely. the, overhead, before was the it? corner got back in. Yeah. I frequent I remember Home Depot. Well, and the ladies, her bear concern was high school kids being over near there and have something give you know they might have kicked the panel out and that's where we're going in well, hang out when we're not where we should be i don't know i don't know uh and the uh one another topic i have the townwide celebration is yes rapidly actually not that really far away yeah, we're, we're, we're like we're like thinking about it one night when i could like talk about opening the pool and we're, this is the end of the pool but it's, that's a short window so we yeah. should really Jeez, the, the, the committee which is uh sharon and kurt um we, we need we need to have a meeting to talk about some plans and, and start looping some people in we have a dj we have we there are some things we have but there's the list we don't have is a lot bigger you let me know when you're available okay okay We'll find a good rainy Just day. Putting it out there, and, and but we but then we got we got to <laughs> yeah, start that. We got to start those those conversations now because it, it's it happens pretty quick. Uh, all right, that it should be everything from the desk, and then the, the rest of it is all under action needed. Mary, are we going to be cooking at this town wide thing? Um, it's it's up to the committee chair, but if you'd like me, I'd be happy yeah, to. We did pretty good together. We did a damn fine job. Yes, we did, we did. indeed. No one complained. I didn't dare. It was you and me. Come on. <laughs> I'm with you, Mary. It's free food. You can't complain that, was, that much. That was good. Okay. So um, action items. Let's see. Committee reports. We've we've um, personnel committee met for two hours. That's all we want to say about it. Right? It's pretty, pretty short. So, <laughs> then we met for smart another two hours today. So. Another two That's hours today. Preview of the next seven minutes. Right. Uh, <laughs> police committee, <laughs> Matt already gave the report. Um, select board project list will move along. We've, we're getting there. Um, E911 ad address change policy for approval. Now. Is the, does this include the language that we looked at? Yes. Okay. So in your you have it in your in your green folder you have a, a original copy. So this includes all of the language discussed, and there are two. We we also talked about the language and the letters. There's the two versions of the letters with a we're changing your address now or we're changing your address later. Those are the those are the. Thank you templates have those edits in mind to remind us what we said we wanted <laughs> uh, uh, 
wasn't much. There's a couple of things um, around there. I can't remember now. We well, it was, it was for the two uh, uh, C was changing the closing the trans the, the do, requiring following the closing transferring the property for value in the new ownership that we were it was that that language adding the the when to okay, yep. make it required and the two paragraphs at the end of the first page that kind of sets the stage yes well shoot. and then the exemption there was i, I had a just some question we, we just quick clean that up to make it the 25. where's the thing that says you're out of sync if you're an even number on the odd numbered side of the street uh that is um one oh there you go okay oh yeah Re yeah requirements one and two yeah yeah requirements okay two. way up at the top and out of those are the two biggies okay yep. that was what we that's what we wanted yep so, so you, you had mentioned possibly making this part of the ordinance if we have yeah i, I spoke with kevin since we have an e911 ordinance mm -hmm. the policy really should be part of the ordinance and not just a standalone policy it carries more oomph as an ordinance so would this be an amendment to the ordinance i think it would be would that be the proper yeah. this policy yes i mean the, the ordinance would would have to go through some work and that that, that obviously goes through that whole ordinance process right. but yeah this this can be folded into that right and yes that would carry more and, Wait. and I think you know that what? we've got Kevin on shortly. So why don't we hold on this and just ask okay. him, should we just do an, put this as an amendment to our ordinance and, I, and I, why I, one over the other? Yeah. yeah. No that would be, that would be my suggestion because like this, this could require some enforcement action. Yeah. And we need to be policies, our policies, but ordinances, yeah are different so it, goes, it goes under the road name and road location ordinance where it is right now and it addresses new it covers new addresses right it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have anything that that relates to changing them okay. uh, but that can be folded into that uh after you said that, i did start looking at it and and i have some ideas where how it can get in there so it okay. can happen okay. uh so depending on what kevin says we can we can so what's your pleasure we did tell kevin uh 7 30 i think he's on yes okay do you want to um suspend on a few other things and hold them until after executive session i think we just have the the retention policy right the retention yep. policy and the uh using the oh, jp yeah. sidewalk the That's regional municipal Commission. project manager yeah. yes yeah all right and we probably should get to kevin yeah okay so is there a motion to go into executive session to hear advice of council on uh various things including contracts and pending litigation and personnel yes i move so move. second motions made and seconded um discussion no all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. okay okay uh we're back on the record and out of executive session uh and it is 8 20. we have a few more items on our agenda um is there any action as a result of the executive session no okay um e911 address change policy for approval um on advice of council we'd like to have bill send this up to kevin okay um to take a look um he he's going to give you some guidance and it may well include that the e911 folks have to view it and that this needs to be an ordinance amendment okay so no problem you could let him have that we won't act on that tonight sure. all right um general records retention policy yes so uh, as, I've, as i've been going through the policy i came across uh this one which which was adopted in 2017 uh so i sent it up to the state uh records division and 
Uh, they sent it back with some suggestions, which have been incorporated. Uh, things we just a, a little more specific on on some things, but uh, establishing some some dates. I did uh, I did give this to Carrie. She didn't give me any comments on it. Uh, so it does it does say that we should go through our records every year and get rid of things that we don't have to keep. Uh, we can do more than this if we wanted to, but if we re retain this the state schedule, it is does give. For example, like grants are like uh, uh, three years past the closing date or something like that. Like each, each thing has its own specific schedule, like overweight permits are the current year plus the previous two years. And then so every year I throw out a folder, I right? trade a folder. So uh, this allows us to follow that schedule, keeps following that schedule, but they did have some updates to our policy. So I included for you the current policy and then the updated one includes all of the suggestions. Okay, questions? Um, do we need to read this line by line? Well, the first question is, do you, do you want to hold it over? We don't have to adopt it right now. Do you want to hold it and go through it or make some comments? And get them to bill or I mean this is basically just referencing the statutes it appears so what what it helps it what it helps us do is it helps us first control the amount of paperwork in the office but if we say like we keep you know there's something we, we keep that we have to keep for forever, but uh, the records that we don't keep forever, if someone comes back 10 years and say, Hey, you have this grant paperwork from 10 years ago, we can say, no, it was disposed of per the record schedule, but there really be no reason to have a grant 10 years down the road. So for example, we have the route seven sidewalk one. So once that one is ended, we then have to keep all the documentation for a certain period of time until we can actually get rid of it. So what I, what I've been doing is, a lot of these things is I get the folders and I write on the folders or, or I copy the, the schedule, just tape it right to the front of the folder. But that way we just know what's going on because we are, we generate a tremendous amount of paperwork on a regular basis. So really? we do actually. <laughs> uh, so this, this helps to give guidance on how we can move through it and what we have to keep and what we don't have to keep. Um, under the uh, section on the first page, general record schedules, there's a reference to disposition orders, which I don't see above. So that's part of the state procedures. It's it's in there. Uh, the disposition orders are in the first one, access to public records, disposition of public records. It's in that statute. We are in no means by like ready to throw out a bunch of stuff, but this as, this this, I, will, this, this will some, allow us to get rid of stuff that could be gotten rid of right. in the proper format, and we don't violate any rules. Right, it, and that's the other thing: it helps to make it helps us know what we have to keep and what we don't have to keep, and we're not getting rid of something we should have, or not getting or getting rid of something we shouldn't have. So, what's like different from the prior policy? Uh, there are some updates. To, uh, the standards and the law standards and procedures. That whole section they gave me. Uh, the um, record schedules, disposition orders. That whole section they gave me. Uh, and then the records management guidelines. Attention. They updated their their guidance to the towns. So uh, it's just it kind of it, it does expand on the previous one a little bit, but it it just gives a little more specifics. As to what to do with things who's who drafted this this comes from the state uh uh records retention okay N not the league of cities and no okay. no this came from the state archives oh 
they're in charge of kind of yes so so they so the 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 record schedules that talks about here yeah. the state has a record schedule for all sorts of things and we're just agreeing to follow that schedule right we, so, just, so that's that's what was done in 2017 and so I, I asked them, I said, hey, we haven't updated it. And they said, great, here's some suggestions. So it's just it's just expanding on what it did before. But the state archives is who sets the record schedules for, for different documents. Can someone like you or Carrie readily find the schedule? Easily. Okay. Anybody can. It's, it's on their website. Oh, it's very easy to find. Okay. Yeah. I like that part where it says permanent means until the state of Vermont doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what, what's the old language? Uh, wow. Well, oh, in the middle, middle. Until says, water cease to flow. Yeah. Permanent retention. Yeah. yeah. Permanent oh. retention. Wow. Move to adopt. Oh, second. made to adopt and to second. Is there a discussion? This is what the state says we should have. And I guess that's what we should have. Oh, yeah. And it's been tweaked to meet the uh, specific things that needed to be done. Yeah. Okay. Matt? No additional discussion. Sure. Aye. Okay. So, all in favor of adopting the records management and retention plan policy, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion carries and I will send this around for signature. Thank, Thank you. you. And the last thing is the contract with the Regional Planning Commission uh, from Stephanie Burke for their municipal project management services for a Route 7 North Sidewalk, JP Sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, she she sent the draft, the, 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 her, myself, and uh, the gentleman from the state helping us with this contract have we're all agreement there the state is good with the contract he had no no comments no suggestions and that is what we have so what you have on your desk is the shortened version which i think is five pages long well i ended up printing double-sided for them so they have they have they have the whole thing they have the whole oh, thing yeah. good. excellent Get a little book so over happy. here to read thank you <laughs> i have that yeah, if you're lucky it's on your desk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. Yeah, I think it was Probably the heaviest one there. So this is, we can hire the Regional Planning Commission to manage the JP Sidewalk project. Yeah. And we don't have to. In short. <laughs> we don't have to do any. They, the they price will do a lot of work. And so. And their their cost is part of the grant funding. Right. That's paid so. for by part of the grant. Didn't find it. So Did you get it? Do they still? Oh, you give. Does the state still have to approve other place to this? Or state? Is? Nope. The state has seen that. Okay. So he, he has. Derek is the guy from state. Uh, Stephanie emailed it to 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 him. He said, "Work." He said, "I'm good. No comments." And then she sent it to me, and now I have it for you. Okay. Did you get it? Okay. Last week. Right. Oh, you were here the other day. You took it with you. Yep. <laughs> well, good that did me. <laughs> okay. What's your pleasure with this? And there's one signature line. So if you were inclined to approve it, you should authorize someone that to sign. We authorize the board chair to sign on behalf of the town to accept this um, agreement with the Regional Planning Commission. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Did we toss this one to highway? I think we did. It's been, yeah, we it's, we it's, did. We ran it by Dave. Dave said it was forth. this was like a full time job, and oh, he's already sure got is. one. Right. Um, then there was this long list of uh, procedures to go through. To and then the short version was: if you hire somebody from the Regional Planning Commission, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. So we took that out, and <laughs> and they've done work for us before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we're we're getting, we've we've good. worked with Stephanie before, so so we're good. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor of approving the Regional Planning Commission and authorizing board chair to sign on behalf of the town, please say aye. 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 And aye. So motion carries and it's unanimous. Here I go.
Okay. So, looking down through, we met in executive session. Any other new items, I think? Just one. Yep. I have one. Okay, Joe. So, with the um, moving forward with the public safety building, um, <clears throat> the pumping, I brought this up before about the pumping station down at uh, State Police roadway there that services the new building and service the old building. We need to would be my suggestion we meet with the electrician who's going to be wiring the building and talk to him about running power to that because that will be fed from that new building uh, the conduits have been put in the ground when they did the work so it's there and part of this is we need to get this moving because there's a drainage area neck between the slope of the bank on the north south east portion of the property and mckinley avenue of that Fabian will have to be doing. So we need to make sure that whatever wiring is done, it'll be done in the town right away along the edge where the sewer line is. Um, but we don't want to be disturbing any of that drainage. So I think this is something we need to do sooner and later. And I believe it's um, JJ is doing it, right? Yeah. So I, I think we should contact him right off and see if he wants to do the additional work on our behalf. And get a quote. Yeah, I mean, we could. I, I just think because he's there and he's doing it, it would be nice to have just one electrician. And I, I would. That makes a lot of sense. You know, because otherwise you're going to have somebody in there running wires through the conduit into that breaker box to feed it. Um, and I just think we should go with him if he's willing to do it. We can get a price from him. Yeah. So we know, yeah. know about what we're going to spend on it. I, I think that, you know, and it's probably going to come out of the water soon. I, I would say it would, you know, for, for energizing that. And, uh, you know, that's just, it was one of the things I've been trying to say on top of because that pumping station does have to function during an emergency. And heaven forbid we lose power. That humongous generator we're buying that could light up half of Rutland. We'll power that little pump down there and keep us in business. Yeah, so who do you huge. want to follow up on that? Why? I'll JJ in the morning. Okay. All right. Since you know I work for your dad, so I grew I'm up good. with JJ. Yeah. Okay. And you can explain. He did my house. He's 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 a damn good one. And I figure he's going to be there, and he's going to be running the wire. I'd like him to do the job. So I don't think we need a motion at this point because we don't have a number. No, yeah. um, anybody have any problem with the concept? Let me put it that way. Oh, okay. So thanks, Kurt. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think, Bill, you we figured out the where to look for um, information regarding the sewer lines and stuff. Yes. Um, Green Mountain Power is running, going to be putting new poles in. I'm not sure where they're going. And I guess they don't want to drill through the sewer line when they set them. So they're trying to find out where it is. And Bill and Dave spent several hours looking. And I said, well, the state ran that sewer line. We didn't. And then we hired the contractor that the state hired to run from that pumping station to McKinley. So once you get that information, we should be able to figure out where it is. Um, I don't know where they're planning on putting those three phase poles. So. Yeah, I heard squabble. They're coming in through state place and out. That's what I thought it would. That would be the most logical. Yeah. The three phase is at the state place, so they would just replace. And I, would, it, me being simple minded that I am, I would think they would just set the poles where the other ones are and just put the taller ones in. Which means chances are you're not going to drill through the sewer line because they wouldn't have put it under the poles. But that's just me thinking. So. <laughs> Anyway, so Bill and Dave are trying to track down that information. Okay, good. Found a lot of other stuff, but not that. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably why. <laughs> you know, but it, cemetery plans, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so anything else? Chris is still here. Oh, Chris. Um, as you saw, we quickly we we got the word from the school board and we voted on the um, mailing out the ballots. So that that and, matter has been disposed of right and you've addressed uh, so i attended the school board meeting uh about the mailing out the ballots and what have you and there's quite a bit of ambiguity between in those sections of 2680 with uh defining um 
legislative body. Sometimes it seems to refer to the legislative body being the school board and then the select board when you're in a multi-town district. So I think you're on the right track with Joe's suggestion to reviewing that 2680 and then perhaps we'll get you could get together with uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns and other uh, people for revisions to 2680 in the future. 31 budgets went down, school budgets went down, and Section 2680 deals with that revoting of school budgets only. So thank you for your considerations. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. All right. Any motion? Move to approve. No. Move to approve. <laughs> <laughs> we are tired. Okay. The motion's been made to adjourn. Second. And seconded. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 aye.